Now, one way a lot of people are looking to live a little more comfortably during this inflationary time we're in is by asking for a raise. And if you like a big raise, you might have to look for a new job. The pay difference between those who stay at their current jobs compared to those who change jobs is growing, according to the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. Now, as of June, job stayers, people who remained in their job for the past three months, increased their wages by about 4.7% compared to job switchers. Those who change jobs completely, they received a raise of 6.4%. The gap is the largest in two decades. Let's bring in economist and futurist Rebecca Ryan to help break this down. So some 47 million people have changed jobs in the past year, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Do you think that this is a wise and savvy move right around now when a lot of companies are looking for better employees, more engaged employees, when work lethargy is at an all-time high and so many people are calling out sick? Yeah, I mean, this is tied to that quits rate, right? It's people who are saying, oh, I'm not getting my needs met with my current employer. I'm going to try something else. So I think this is one of the things that we're saying that's really tied to that great resignation. And the other thing that your graph showed, Adrian, was job stayers versus job switchers. And because of inflationary pressures right now, employees can ask for more money. You know, we've had 8%, 9% inflation. So it makes sense that wages would go up. And if you've got to leave your job to get a wage that is more in line with inflation, that's a choice that's very personal. But many people, as you know, are making that choice. So for people who are maybe thinking about it and saying, you know, I would like to make more money. I feel like I have to leave in order to get that money. But we're teetering on this potential recession question. Uh, should you be wise and think about getting that next job before you quit your current job? Yeah, well, there are three things to consider, right? One is stigma. So am I going to be stigmatized for, for leaving? The second thing is if this sort of volatility on my resume starts to stack up against me, right? But then the third thing you've got to offset that with is like, what do I and my family need? And I should point out, people don't just leave for money. People leave for more responsibility. They leave for more life-work balance. A lot of people are trying to claw back their, their well-being. So there are a lot of things that go into this. I mean, I think any of us of a certain age, we've left jobs and gone to different jobs. So you know it's not just a often it's not just for the money. Okay, we have a question uh, from one of our viewers, Dennis Purvis. Let's listen to him. Around eight years ago, I was told that the ideal income for happiness was about 70,000 a year. Could anyone tell me what it is today? <laughs> how happy do you, how much money do you have to make to be happy, Rebecca? Oh, it's such a great question. In fact, Several years ago, um, it was the factor that I used to make sure that our employees' salaries were at a level because the research shows that until you hit, I think at the time it was $72,000 to Dennis's question, now it's $85,000 adjusted for inflation and all those things. But research shows that you know until you hit that point, you're worried about money. And once you hit that point, your worries level off and you're able to just enjoy uh, life a bit more. So it's, that's why it's kind of called the, you know, the happy threshold. I think a lot of people are seeking happiness because life is so incredibly stressful. So I mean, sure. I mean one of the things that the pandemic taught us is like you can't take it for granted. Yeah. yeah. And you can't and money cannot buy happiness. It just can make you a little bit more comfortable when you're miserable. Uh, Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to our viewer, Dennis, for asking that question. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.